There is a fifth dimension. A dimension of sound. Damn it, Frank, we tell him to be quiet. I spill my hot cup of Uranus again. A dimension of sight. Hey, Arch, I'm gonna sock you in the puss. A dimension of mind. Nan Adams, is that you? Ah! Ah! Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Chim chimney, so. chim chimney, chim chim taru. Don't know why I did that. Apologies. I mean, only in the fifth dimension of Twilight Zone podcast would you do that, Triv. I mean, I swear to God. I know. I'm would a pain you? in the ass. I know. But, you know, that's why we are here to talk about the Twilight Zone as a, uh, was it, what was that? Uh, Chee Chee Bang Bang? What, what? Yep. Yeah. Is that what it is? I think so. No, it was Mary Poppins, wasn't it? Was it? I, I don't so. know. I have no idea. I think it's, on, I think it's Mary Poppins. Afro Circus, Afro Circus. Oh my god. So yeah, that 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 was a thing. How you guys doing? Welcome back to the Fifth Dimension of Twilight Zone Podcast. Yeah, we're, we're we're already in it. Yeah. Oh, we've been yeah, in we it. Were, we never <laughs> Yeah, we never we never we never stopped being in it. As soon as I press Whoa. record, that's when it starts. I'm always sir. in it. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Let's go I always have it. a body part in the Twilight Zone. I don't like to talk about which one though. Um your corn. That's my tail. Yeah, your corny corn. No, my yeah. tail. There's a difference. Yeah, you're... sure, sure. Uh, that's how you get your tail. That's how you get tail in the Twilight Zone. Oh, good lord. So no, or you, you get stuck. Are <laughs> you get stuck in? You get stuck in a in a world where you can't escape. I was gonna say there's other ways to get tail, at least according to this week's episode. I know that that poor guy was that poor guy was cock blocking, or she was cock blocking. Uh, he was he was, was catfished. Was Oh, was he? Yeah, it was. Is that what it was? Yeah. You know that dude wouldn't try to smash it at least once before he left? I don't know, man. <laughs> they, I, I think I think they're like Ken dolls in the Twilight Zone. I don't think they actually like like women. Or no, women that's just like the fifties and early sixties and generally. They're just Ken dolls. They, they only liked uh they only like witches and horses, you know. Oh god. We Fucking... got some good old fashioned ultra violence this time around though. Oh yeah. Like that was a lot more violent than I was expecting for the Twilight Zone for the sixties. I know you got blood, hey, black and white. Only, only, yep. only Rod Serling would uh, give you the ultra violent. No, isn't it um, Clockwork Orange give you the old ultra violent, ultra yeah. violence? Yeah, give you all. Was it when he seven sex to give you the old one two or whatever? The old heave ho. I remember he tried. He like tried to kill that woman with a giant penis chair. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, welcome back. It's another hour long talk of the hour long podcast of the hour long episode of the Twilight Zone that uh I'm sure Jacob actually quite enjoyed. I I I just get this feel I get this feeling, I have this this thing in my brain, it sparks and things and is that what she says in Blazing Saddles? No. <laughs> what was it she said? That was in clue you're thinking clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clue. That's what it is. Flame, flames, flames on the side of my face. It's the same character, Madeline Kahn. Yeah. Yeah. It's fire flames. popping out of it's my just, head. Flames. It's, 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 it's fire. Flames. Just. <laughs> uh, I did learn something new. What's that? About I learned something about the about a, a particular actor that he's not actually Scottish. I did not know that. But you know, like when he was when he was on screen, like if you listen close, there is a little I don't not I'm not gonna say like hardcore Scottish, but there's definitely a bit of accent in his voice. Yeah, it's called A. Who? Are you talking about A? James uh, Dewan. uh Scotty from Star Trek. Yeah, James Dewan. James Dorn yeah, James Dewan. That he was, was him. that was him. You didn't notice that? Like, dude, he's a good looking man back in the fifties and sixties. Are you kidding me? James Wait, Dewan? Who was he? Who was he he's the, the he's the first neighbor the the, the with yeah, the daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you didn't see anything. I'm playing tricks on you. you didn't see anything. Watch me pull this rabbit out of my <laughs> out of my computer. <laughs> pull my dilithium crystals out of my computer. Uh, oh, computer. Yeah. I can't do it, the Captain. Main, I the do main have guy the looks power. real familiar too. Yeah, I was yeah. I was trying to figure that out. He's been in a lot of stuff, but not in Which like one? a really uh uh um Ed, Ed, Redfield? Ed Nielsen. Yeah, Redfield. Yeah. yeah he's in Perry Mason. He was in yeah. Carnival Rock, Teenage Doll, Crybaby. I was Killer, gonna say hot, that Dorn looked Cargo. really familiar. And I, I thought he had maybe been in another Twilight Zone episode, but he hadn't. Mm. I don't know what I'm thinking. David, of. So James uh, Scottish? Oh, he's no, he's Canadian. 
He's Canadian, uh, eh? I was expecting. I thought he was Scottish. He was come out and say, "My name is Connor McLeod of the Clan McLeod." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm starting to think you, you guys are trolling me. <laughs> uh, we we the haven't fourth season. honestly. <laughs> Honestly, Jacob, we haven't gotten to some of the I haven't episodes. said jack shit about this season. That's all been our You good friend, said Nick. that this episode I said, this season I, sucks. You said I did you said not. Nick. I you did will say not. that this season sucks and you will not I've like been. it. And... My yeah. only my only issue with this season is Jess Bell. I've been hearing about how bad the fourth season was for so long. And I mean, you know the only one other people echo that sentiment, but Honestly, three episodes in, I'm kind of liking this season. I've been getting stuff from this season that season three wasn't giving me. I mean, season three had some great episodes, but I'm higher on this this season so far. I mean, we're only three episodes in, but so far I'm higher on this season, which I guess comparatively say comparatively speaking, we could say we're six episodes in. I'm I'm digging this season more than season three. Oh so my god. So at the end of the season it's gonna come down to Nick on one side of the fence and Jake on the other, and I'm gonna be in the middle like, oh god, can't we I mean, just get along? Next week it <laughs> could just nosedive. I don't know. But so far I'm digging it. I mean they're I, I've liked the episodes, I've liked the vibe, the feeling. Um they haven't felt bloated. They're longer, yeah, but like this one, I, I was really once we got like to about the halfway point, I remember there's about twenty minutes left. I was like, okay, it's I bet it's going to slow down now because it kind of like, you know, blew its load and everywhere. And I was like, it's, it's going to slow down now and it's not going to be interesting. This is this is where the bad's going to come in. But it didn't. They kept it going. I mean, they are telling longer stories. Um, The story, I feel like, sure, this story, just like any other one, could have been told in 30 minutes or 24 minutes. But I feel like they told more story, more of a story. It wasn't just filler. They actually told more stuff and they used the hour. Yeah, and uh, that episode is, of course, season four, episode three, <laughs> Valley of the Shadow, <laughs> directed by that. Peter Lafferty, or directed by Peter, I always say Peter, Perry Lafferty, written by Charles Beaumont, uh, production yeah. code 4861, air date January 17th, 1963, stars Ed Nielsen, Natalie Trundy, David Opacho, Dabs Gear, Jacques, Jacques Cousteau, no, Jacques Abacon, and Duncan James McLeod, Duhon. McLeod. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is a, an episode that I uh, was extremely, uh, I wouldn't say I was bored by, but I felt like it was way too long. Um, it definitely overstays its welcome by about 20 minutes. Um, I, I just, I, I felt like it was like, yeah, all right, like the last week, like the last couple episodes, like, oh, okay, we're just going to repeat the same thing over and over and over. And, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like when you, Pull it out. You push it out, or however you want to say it. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> what you heard me. You heard me correct. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it's fine. It uses like a lot. Of, you can see a lot of like current day tropes in this episode, with like the invisible wall. You can see that in like stuff like um, Once Upon a Time. You know, the th this actually episode reminded me of Once Upon a Time because of how she gets stuck in the town and she can't escape and um he? well i'm talking about once upon a time the the oh, tv series yeah, yeah. yeah. oh that and, once upon a time I you're talking about yeah, yeah. An episode no oh, no, no, no yeah no. i guess um, i mean this actually gave me uh, this actually gave me like i was thinking my brain went to horror um movies like uh silent hill or what was it population 578 or something like that where the population had to stay at that number throughout the entire like movie. I've never actually seen that. Me neither. Or That's heard of it actually. I think um, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Silent Hill though, I have felt yeah. Pyramid Head yeah. would have made this even better. <laughs> <laughs> Rip somebody's skin off in one fell swoop. Oh yeah, it's population four sixty three. It's from two thousand six. I've heard of that. Interesting. Like I've seen the either the box or you know the poster or something, but I, it, yeah, I've not seen it. Like that's where my brain went at first, and I I saw this way back, but it's been ages, so I didn't really remember a lot of what happened. And not that it would go full hardcore horror just because of the time and place, but um, yeah, it's um, I don't know, it's a fine episode. It's not something I'm going to go back and rewatch. It's it feels like yeah, I've kind of you know guy and his dog. You know he made you know. 
So, I think it's kind of interesting know. that like it almost starts out like a comedy. You know, here comes do, 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 guy and his dog driving down the road, peaceful valley, and it turns into like a straight up like horror horror story about hey, here we have a you know a group of people who you know want him to leave and he doesn't want to leave. He wants to go feed his animal in the one restaurant that apparently doesn't appear to be open. And um, I don't know. They're like, come stay with us, Danny. One of us, one of us, you know, that type Google of thing. Gobble. <laughs> yeah. I felt I, 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 accept her. I, I, that's it, what I was thinking of. Like this is this closely represented, like almost like that Joe Dante um, episode of the Twilight Zone movie where like he has oh, all these. Oh, it was kind of, uh, it was very, yeah. it was very much, it, it had vi- like at very first it had vibes of um it's a good life. Like yeah. what, what happened to the dog? Did he get wished into the cornfield? Yeah, it's never fully explained. Like even he, Redfield gets like tossed into the the twilight zone and or into the whatever and I don't he's know. Deconstructed. Yeah, he get, yeah, he that comes over like a thousand like a million pieces and turns into a chocolate bar and <laughs> I got to ask. Yes. Why even though they had this technology, were they letting this pre-adolescent little girl run around with this device because she was a spoiled little girl and they're like okay well we'll shut her up by putting her out hey she had a cat dog chases the cat fuck the dog you know no and why because in a town that small they might have why the effect is effective i suppose but whenever they like make materialize something it just like appears which i know that's like a cut but they could do fades why not like Fade it in or something like when they do the sandwich, it's just like wow, 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 wow. Dong. I'm like, why not do like a fade or something there? Because That's they can not... only steal from Forbid- Forbidden Planet for so long, Jacob. God, honestly, though, I think Forbidden Planet for like five seasons, and we're only on <laughs> yeah. season four. <laughs> You know, but I, I do think that they did that with a lot of stuff. Like, if you go to sci-fi movies of the 50s, there was a lot oh, of yeah. fades and things like that. So they were probably doing this to make it more like something different at the time. And why a ham sandwich? What is it with the 60s and ham sandwiches? Like, they had no turkeys back then? Were they attacking I, Triv? Like, what what's happening ham here? Ham sandwiches are awesome. <laughs> are they, though? Ham I mean, sandwich. yeah, I get you. T- <laughs> pork chop ham sandwiches. Pork chop sandwiches. Oh, my God. <laughs> As long as it's not a steamed ham. I mean, I, we can wish for a turkey sandwich, you know, with What's mustard. But See, I was <laughs> I hoping someone would take turkeys. a bite of the sandwich and then, like, toss it in his face and go, I asked for no mayo. Mm-hmm. Where's my beer? Um, Where's my turkey sandwich? Well, oh, by the way, on a side note, Population 436, the film from 2006, mm-hmm. um, has Fred Durst in it. Oh, great. Uh, that, that's... Okay. Oh, he's hey, the cop. The, That's right. The, I forgot yeah. about that. Deputy Bobby, Bobby Kane. That's a proper name for him. <laughs> By the way, we gotta get this out of the way. This movie, this episode, did use something for Forbidden Planet. It was the dissembler. Yep. Mm. So, how would you, you keep your dissemblers or the small ones? I think the small ones. I like how the original is just literally a bigger version of the small one. They didn't revise <laughs> well, it or anything. It is just a shrunk down version or a, a well. Large... I mean, is it look at video games like consoles? They get smaller as they go along. So yeah, but they I mean, look kinda... different at least. Yeah, it was sometimes. the sixties or the well, probably the fifties at that identical. point. Identical. Everybody wore the same shirt. Like you couldn't tell. You know, if you were looking at movies in black and yeah. white. You got three guys wearing white shirts with black ties and black pants and there, black There's only three glasses. There's only three types there's of shades guys of gray. In... Well, I'm saying though, if you're wearing a black shirt or a black a black tie with a white shirt and then you've got like black rim glasses and your hair is black and it's slicked back. I mean, everybody's going to go around looking like Revenge of the Nerds guys. Hey, there's what only exactly three does this have to do with the dematerializer. <laughs> <laughs> there's, hey, there's no, there's only three types of guys in '60s television. There's the country bumpkin. There's the one that wears like the slacks and white shirt, and then there's the guy who wears like the full on suit. There's no other characters. No, you're wrong. You've also got the uh, greaser. Eh, that was the '70s. No, it wasn't. Why are we doing that. <laughs> that was the '50s. No, I, I disagree. Wasn't that when? Uh, wasn't that when like uh, '70s and '80s when like the outsiders and um yeah, whatever you, that you, you're, made. but but, it was but they were referencing the, the with 50s, john travolta yeah. where he was uh you know singing and all dancing all that saturday greece was Denver? set in the 50s oh yeah greece yeah but it was still filmed in the 70s it it's Denver. from the 50s so. <laughs> <laughs> those aren't gre- uh, greasers aren't they 
in Saturday Night Fever? No, 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 no. Grease. Oh yeah, I know that, but I was. I, mean, about, I thought you were. What about Staying about Alive? Staying Alive about... was set in the seventies. Those aren't greasers. Those are disco yeah. guys. That's There's a, a sequel. difference. Sequel to. Well, I mean, yeah. it's Saturday greased up greaser men. Greased <sighs> up grease men. Nick. <laughs> Anyways, Buddy, did you know this pal. premise was? Did you know this premise Amigo. was actually um, expanded upon in the Prisoner, the long, oh. short-lived TV series? No. Oh, the one where the guy's on the island. Yeah, and he finds out he's number six. He finds out there's clones. Like oh, it's like the island, which kind is of, a terrible. The island took of... a lot of yeah inspiration from like Logan's Run, Prisoner, some other. Is stuff. it bad that I like the island? I think it's. Uh, I like the idea face's of the best island. movie. Yeah, it's okay. I like things. I like about Ewan that. McGregor. I like yeah. it all. I even, I even like the weird kind of I action Logan's sequences run, at though. the end. Yeah, and it's very Logan's Run. In the I've film. never seen Logan's Run. What? <laughs> you know what's gonna happen, Jacob? <laughs> every week, I'm gonna, every week you're gonna bring up a movie. I'm like, I have never seen that movie. You're like, how are you a fucking critic? How are you a reviewer? First, he says he hates the thing. What? I do hate the thing. When? I've How said this many times. Thing? You hate your thing, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't see my thing. Then, I don't know what's Then what was no, it? You, um, you hadn't seen Ben Hur. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a fan of. Have Pulp you Fiction. seen Lawrence of Arabia? Yeah, it's one of my favorite right. movies of all time. Good. Okay, we can at least establish that. We talked about this last week when I said Pierre O'Toole got robbed from an Oscar. Oh, yeah, you're right. Come on, Triv. Give it the game. No. No. Pop that corn. Um, what were we? What were we even discussing? The prisoner, Patrick. The fact that you hadn't seen uh, Logan's Run. Oh yeah, I've never seen Logan's Run. Uh, I remade so bad. Wasn't it supposed to be remade? I think it was supposed to be remade. It's probably in pre-production for the past thirty-two years or something. (laughs) I've heard. Yeah, actually, Logan's Run was written by one of a writer from um, Twilight Zone. The only reason Logan's Run wasn't which it, it gained success. Yeah, for George Clayton name. Johnson is the author. He's the one that he's a um, uh, Twilight Zone writer. When cool. Logan's Run came out, or was about to come, I think it was coming out, it wasn't out yet. The trailer, the first trailers for Star Wars came out. And the even the people behind Logan's Run said, you see that? That's why our movie's not going to do well. <laughs> because, I mean... Yeah, because it came out the same had, year, right? Uh, right around the same time, but they, uh, I don't remember the exact year, but, um, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, this episode really has a lot of, um, uh, precursors to what would come later in other films that feels very familiar because it's, you know, it's about a small town in apparently New Mexico, which I don't ever remember hearing that's in New Mexico and doesn't look like New Mexico. And why is Oh, that's true. I Albuquerque. thought he was going. I thought he was looking for Bugs Bunny at first. I'm like Albuquerque. Albuquerque. The basic premise of this episode was just just that. It was pretty basic. I mean, it's it's not really that deep. It's a basic pitch. Yes, not really. But I thought what they did with it, how they the characters they explored the characters and they explored not just the baseline. Like I feel like if this was a 24 minute episode, we would have gotten like the the uh, uh, just the surface level stuff. That's all they would have had time to do. And they would have gotten the story out there, and it would have been fine. But like I said about last week's, I think the week before that, this afforded them more time to dig a little deeper, honestly, into those questions that we here on this very show have had a lot of times about those shorter episodes. When yeah. we're talking about one of them, we're like, well, what about this? Or you think they did this? You th-? Now we get to experience that because they actually have some of those conversations, maybe not to that extent that we go sometimes, but you know, they're able to explore some of the more some of the details and as of now three episodes in i feel like they've done a good job of that it kept me interested like the things they were saying i was like yeah that that makes sense and i like how this is going down and they were able to kind of keep the suspense up for a little while longer and uh keep that going i like that um once again next week they might do the same thing maybe they're going to go by that same template take a shorter uh, an idea that they could do in a short amount of time and expand upon it and i'll be like man that was a slog but I thought this time they did well. I was I was entertained from beginning to end. I do have it questions did... about the end, though, by, by the way. Yeah, I, I will say that growing up in a very small town, like the premise for what they were aiming for was quite interesting. Like, because you do, you roll through these little towns and it's like, you know, no one's out on the street. And it's like, what goes well, on I mean, behind those walls? You know, 
Why do people? Well, they stay? also the interest. Well, I would say the interesting thing about small towns too is like everybody knows everybody, so it's like, you know, when this guy walks in with the itty waist and round thing in your face, you know, you know, <laughs> it, it just he gets sprung. No, yeah, yeah right. Um, oh, you, you guys like that that um, <laughs> that that thing I posted that you apparently saw was Obama. <laughs> what? Oh wait, I vaguely remember they... commenting on something about Obama. Yeah, the the AI. Ross oh, Ridley. oh, the AI Rod Sterling. Yeah, it did sound like kind of like Obama. <laughs> Actually, where is that? Hold on a second. Yeah, uh... I like big butts, and I cannot lie. You, other brothers, can't deny. I think he'll probably do it better. When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, <laughs> didn't I do this last week? <laughs> you yes, started. yes, you did. What did I do with it? Oh, I know where it's at. What's it? Oh my uh, God, yeah. Becky! Look at that girl's butt. <laughs> Makes me so horny. Butts, and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny that when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Want to pull up tough because you notice that butt was stuffed deep in the jeans she's wearing. I'm hooked and I can't stop staring. <laughs> oh baby! Oh baby! I want to get with you and take your picture. My homeboys tried to warn me, but that butt you got makes like, me, me so, so horny. Me, 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 me so horny. Oh, rump of smooth skin. You say you want to get in my bend. My bends. Well, use me. Use me. Use me because you ain't that average groupie. I've seen them dancing to hell with romancing. <laughs> I like <laughs> hell with romancing. <laughs> you know, the funny part about editing, a po- editing the podcast is I do it like on Friday, right? And yeah. I've forgotten about everything that I've I've done. Or we talked about, and so I'm like texting you guys about it, and you guys go, "What the fuck are you guys talking about?" Like I don't remember saying that at all, and but I remember this came up. I'm like, I gotta find a way to do this, and I, it didn't take me very long, and you know, it worked. Nice. And Chat nice. GPT? No, it wasn't Chat GPT. It was just some AI website. But now they won't let me do anything because I've uh, like used up my only free. Because I was gonna all start right. doing. Oh, it's so sad. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so that's your that's your weekly dose of AI, uh, Rod Oh God! Uh, all we uh, as we all go to hell. Speaking of hell, this guy goes to hell. This felt like uh, he was going to the uh, Children of the Corn. I was waiting for like the children to start popping up and start murdering, you know, the dog and because they did he did murder the dog by making him disappear and then eventually killing him and bringing him back and stuff. How did he do that? But well, I guess they 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 heal them with well, the they, thing. Yeah, they said they can control time. Dude. Yeah, the thing I the thing that got me was like when the dog disappears, he's really calm about it. Like he's not like, "Where the fuck is my dog? Give me my damn dog!" Like it's like, how do you your dog just literally disappeared in front of your face? How can you be calm? Because he's not your average groupie. Apparently, couldn't believe that that's what just happened. I guess yeah. the dog ran around to the back of the house. Oh yeah, after absolutely. Another it's after another cat, Captain. <laughs> And the cat was like up in the flowers, up in the thing. How did the cat get up in the flowers, up in the thing? Cats can do that shit, man. They're like down here and then they get scared and they're up there. I think the cats yeah. had their own disassemblers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's the, uh, you know, it's how they catch mice and rats and Bible and goes west. And yeah. We should so. probably have someone do the opening prologue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. opening prologue to the series or to the episode? To the episode, but I would imagine there's one to the, so the prologue. That'd be a oh yeah, shush! You you call the thing the the PSN Narration. network like that's the a PSN that you the, just like playing the PlayStation Network network. That's like calling it's it called ATM the PSN machine. network. That's what it's called. That's just called yeah. the network. The, so it's it's called the, the, that's what they the call PlayStation it. Network. I know what they network. call it PSN. I know it's a PSN, but they call it P- well, they say PSN well, they network. They are wrong. Well, I mean, not everybody's a <laughs> like calling an ATM genius. machine an, an uh, automatic money or trans automated transfer machine machine. Yeah, an ATM machine, automatic transfer machine machine, automatic teller machine. Oh yeah, See, you guys do it too. Uh, ATM. Machine. I know, no, I don't call an ATM machine an ATM, ATM machine. ATM. I call it an ATM. Ask the mouth. Ask the mouth. <laughs> yeah. I have a different. It's like one, you call your okay. little friend Play Doh. Okay then. Yeah, I don't. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's do. Uh, Trim's making us do the opening narration. Jacob, I was waiting for the end, but you know, she wanted to go to the beginning. Oh, fuck's sake! Okay. She wanted to start. You've seen them. 
little towns tucked away far from the main roads. You've seen them, but have you thought about them? Yes. What do the people in these places do? Why do they wow, stay? Wow, wow, wow. Philip Redfield never thought about them. If his dog hadn't got after that, gone after that cat, he would have driven through Peaceful Valley and put it out of his mind forever. But he can't do that now, because whether he knows it or not, his friend's shortcut has led him right to the capital of the Twilight Zone. Yeah, the capital of the Twilight Zone is such a crappy place. It makes it's you so stay small. there. I, yeah. I'm just curious that they like they have the hotel there, and it's like you've not used this hotel in like do they keep all the rooms up and stuff? Because who's going to stay there? Well, the guy they, like... they brought that up. Remember, the guy was like, "Oh, that's right, I mean, yeah. you think it was a good idea to leave the hotel open and close the restaurant? Why did we even do that?" That was they, they they execute people, so clearly they are cannibals. No, they had never they never executed people before. They assimilate. Well, you don't people. know that. Have you never seen nothing they, but they trouble? Speci- you don't know. They you specific- know what they do. They specifically said that they had never executed a person until they got to Philip. True. I could say I'm a woman, but it doesn't make it true. Not touching that. Not touch. Not touching that. So I was when you're tired. With the old dick. <laughs> With the old dick. You want me to beat my head yeah. against my mic some more? Because I will. <laughs> it's. Ouch. I'm trying to grow a channel here. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not getting that has nothing no to more. do with your physical need to be a woman, Nick. It go it comes down to the pure and utter fact that they specifically said that they had never executed someone before. They we had assimilated people. Whatever endeavor you choose to go on, Nick. Which is great, but that's not how what happened here yet, Dork. They assimilated people. They did not execute people. There's a difference. Assimilate. Yes, they were the they board? were doing the Borg. Board. Yeah, exactly. They were doing the Borg thing. Resistance is futile. So it was my head to my mic. Ouch. I see Nick didn't like the episode. So yeah, Twilight Zone. Capital of Twilight Zone. Dog disappears. Cat goes up tree. Mm -hmm. Uh, Man eats sausage. I don't know. What (laughs) happens next? (laughs) Well, I would like to say... Twilight Zone or your internet browser history? Uh, Maybe. (laughs) All I need was a little mint. (laughs) Nobody nobody got the chew. You need a mint? I would also like to say, and this is taking like it back a little bit, but the map that he is that he that his friend drew for him is like the worst map ever drawn by anybody. Yeah, it felt like it was like a, a map that he got from uh, Bugs Bunny or something. Basically, yeah, that's why he took a wrong toy at Albuquerque. Right? He didn't even He's get like... to Albuquerque. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's like, hey, a kid drew this for me. He said, "Go here." When I was supposed to go here, maybe it was given to him by uh, Captain Spaulding or something. <laughs> I can't tell but, whether this is a cue or a person. Um, but I mean, like I said, it's it's a small town. Apparently, there's 984 people here, but we only see like a handful of people. And uh, we come across the gas station attendant, and he's like, "Turn back now, or go back where you, once you came. We don't want you here. You're kind of like, welcome here." Yeah, he's like, "Here's four dollars for oh. gas." <laughs> If our full like, tank, here's a 10. Yeah. yeah. You have a 50 gallon tank, it's four dollars. <laughs> right. He's like, here's a 10. He's like, oh, Mr. He's like, no, I want my change back. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was like, here's a tenner. Keep the change. Like, I hope I got change. Like, I hope you do too, bitch. Yeah, he's <laughs> you like give my money. Call him a filthy animal. <laughs> Did you guys um and I know that's not the case with like nowadays, but like like the old timers would always talk about like counting back the change properly. And can you imagine, like, the one person oh, that was advocating for them not pe- counting back change properly just so yeah. they could get his dog and avoid well, all the it's bullshit? Like, what, what caused Redfield to get into this situation? Like, is he gets lost or something like that? Or Yeah. Damn, you that know what $10 was worth in, like, today, back then? Well, you know what I mean. Like, a, <laughs> let's say 150 200 No, not that much. $10 in 1963... Was the equivalent to ninety nine dollars and thirty nine cents now? Wow! Which would give you half a tank of gas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, ten fucking dollars. Oof! Damn, man. I wish ten dollars was worth a hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, I mean it is, but I would. You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nick. So he um he has the the map drawn by his friend to get him to take him on a shortcut to get him back to where back to Albuquerque or back to Albuquerque. Uh, but, so um, apparently New Mexico is so small, like so one directional that it only needs like two roads to 
to figure out where he needs to go, but he gets Basically, lost anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, he backtracks because or he's trying to find his way, so he um ends up in Peaceful Valley, even though he he shouldn't have. Yeah, because no gas, going, no map. He kept going. He would have ended up like in the desert and found an RV with some old <laughs> bald teacher and a crackhead looking <laughs> up meth. <laughs> In that or something there. out of the hills have eyes. Yeah, that too. Or maybe maybe you found uh, a pilot who's carrying an alien, and he comes across also like true. Randy Quaid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, boys. I am back. Four. <laughs> <laughs> so we're saying this: the desert holds many secrets, but uh, it does. It does. So. Did anyone notice like the road that, that he took to get to Peaceful Valley seemed very familiar to the the episode we watched like two episodes prior? Was it that one? It felt like it, yeah. I, I think that road has made a couple of appearances. Um, maybe even like oh oh no, it was a movie that I saw that reminded me a lot of like I think it was the same road. I mean, it's the same road that uh Dorothy went down to find you know Scarecrow, right? No, that was that it wasn't gold paved. Yeah, dude, this is well, you don't know it's black and white. No, it was in color. <laughs> no, I'm talking about uh, this. The, the, it could have been uh, painted gold. You don't know, Trip. That part of the be... movie was was color. <laughs> no, I'm talking about I'm talking about this episode. Right, I but said, the road could be painted gold. You don't know. You You're going know, off on some weird tangents tonight, man. I'm just was, gonna say it. It was dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's gold dust in the in the dirty dirt. gold. Yeah, it was dirty gold. Oh, good lord. Views of Movie Emporium are not those representative of trivial theater. <laughs> Even though we're right next to each other. Exactly. I As should. a founding member of this podcast. Exactly. <laughs> Take offense. <laughs> Wait, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Am I coming through my mic? Yeah. You sound yeah. like it. You're not you're not canned. Because yeah, it's not all green. Oh, it's like, yeah. Give me a second. Mm, bop. Da 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 he decides he's going to go through the town anyways. He stops. Dog chases cat. Girl disappears dog. Uh, Scotty comes in with his dilithium crystals. He's like, I haven't seen anybody. Your dog's out back, mister. Yeah, he was. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then, he gets back back and, and... then gets back into his car and as compared to heading back towards wherever he needed to go, he ended he up Chris, uh, heading towards yeah, he Chris the restaurant. Had... Right. And he goes in the restaurant and he's like, Hey, have you seen my dog? Yes, sir. He's behind you. Oh, well, that's good. Now where's the restaurant at? Sir, we don't have a restaurant. Well, make me make me steak, woman. And that's how the episode ends. He makes a mistake. Is that right? Is that how that is that how this works? No. No. Oh. Sure. Well, I mean, no, but he goes in there and he's like, Hey, I want to play I want to I want a place to stay. And they're like, No, we don't have places to stay. Like, how do you not have places to stay? There's no one here. Like, they're all out, sir. Yeah. It's like, but they're keys Sweet steak. Yep. Yeah, sweet steak. <laughs> uh... Yeah, sweet steak. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, this is when we're introduced to Ellen, who's played by, uh, I think, Natalie Trudy. Uh, Trundy. Yep. And a uh, pretty young thing. Probably in her 20s. Yeah, she's sweet up on old uh, uh, Redfield, who... He's traveling to Albuquerque to interview the pizza on the roof. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I found it interesting that the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I already said what I think. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you mean as far as... Nick, you mean as far as this, like, where we're at in the movie or the yeah, show? Yeah, until, until he Chris Hemsworth himself into a wall, to a <laughs> visible wall. Um, I found it interesting that, like, the last newspaper they had was from 53, and the town had been basically keeping the secret for over 100 years. Like it's amazing that, was... like, that they were able to do that because, like, you would think that somebody would have, like, how many people, how many people in this town have been stuck there because they uh, kind of wandered over there? I imagine just to keep, like, any place, you have to kind of keep the inbreeding down. So, in order to do so, you've got to bring in fresh people. 
It's like Wicker Man. But do they do they worry about the bees though? No, they did not. Not the, not they the worry bees. about the birds and the bees. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 uh, same couple birds and bees. Like, this is exactly. something the episode universe. did not touch on. What the like fact that it was opportunity missed is that how do you how have you procreated for the past hundred years? And Dude, they they the didn't stream? even talk about procreating generally in schools. Why in the hell would they talk about it in the Twilight Zone? I mean, they did turn back time. Take away all if the I could turn back time, <laughs> I would make procreate. <laughs> no, I mean, but they have the time turner machine or whatever it is, so they they don't need to have procreate. They can just turn themselves to an earlier day. Earlier time. A better Earlier time. Look. A better place. <laughs> exactly. But no, I, um, I, you know, asking him how things, like what my thoughts are so far in it, I think it was a, like a solid basis for, for the episode. It kind of left it, it kind of left you open to, okay, what's coming next. There was a lot of yeah. places it could have gone. I mean, like I said, they cabin in the woods it when he tries to leave. And uh, it, it's weird because he like, all he has to do is go to the, all he has to do is leave. Instead of going to the hotel, once he goes to the hotel, he's screwed. He's stuck thought, there for the rest of his life. I thought that was a good is, effect. Oh, it was an excellent effect. I mean, did, I did, clearly saw how it went, but I rewound that twice. Because I was like, how did they, did they, because he's clearly stopped from the back in real life. And I was like, did they have like a cable on the car? Or how did they just stop the car so abruptly like that without ripping out the rear end? That's what she said. Yeah, <laughs> blow out the rear end. Uh-huh. Uh, it was Nan blue- Adams. Exactly, Nan Adams, the invisible Nan Adams. Yep. Um, I mean, it was it was definitely quite believable. Like they did a great job just destroying the front of that car. Yeah, when it's and they had to cut just right because I mean, when the car like because I went back and watched it multiple times when the car's yank and like stops like that, it obviously nothing happens to the front of the car, but they cut it right when it does that, and it really sold the effect that hey, the car's yeah. jacked. Oh, that was yeah, a really good, like, however it was that they, they I, I imagine they had some type of cable or something attached to the back of the car, because it just, like, stopped. <laughs> it was like it ran into an invisible brick wall, which wasn't yeah. invented until the 1970s. Yeah. Um. Sure. No, and then he's, like, when he's at the house, like, the invisible wall, like, the, they, they're, like, real wonky with the invisible wall at the house, because sometimes they feel like putting up the shield, sometimes they don't, sometimes they do, and I like how he, um... He like think, takes a shovel to it. I think it's a trust thing. They were like, uh, at first they didn't fully trust him, and then, but well, as we find out, you know, they they want to give him the opportunity to make the right decision, so they had to let him out. I mean, what do you think about like uh, Dorn? Like his introduction, he's like the mayor of the town. He doesn't give like all, too much information away until he like destroys his car, and you know, it's it's kind of like. Uh, you, we we don't want you to we can't let you leave we have like all this like technology i mean what do you guys think about that kind of the revelation that this is a town set in like you know bygone era or set in set in like um i don't know whatever you call it i like i like i like that um but i like how they left it open to where you knew that that wasn't it there was more there was more going on here obviously and i thought they did a pretty good job of He's milling out that information as it went along to keep it interesting. I did really like where it went as far as philosophical questions they had for themselves and things that came up concerning this whole situation. I like that they went there. I don't feel like it would have gone there if it was only 24 minutes or at least not in that kind of detail. Like when we get to the end, I know we're not quite there, but like we're not even the end, like when they are deciding what to do with him and how he brings up, you know, you're telling me I'm so bad for, you know, I, I'm we being the outsiders are going to like kill somebody or kill people, but you're sitting here saying you're going to do the same thing. And they're like, yeah, but we have to. And he's like, do you, Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> he hit him where he lived. Yeah. And I thought that was, that was really interesting because he's right. Yeah. Cause they're like, like the mayor. Was, I think the word, I'll say, I think the word I was looking for is frozen. They're kind of frozen in time where they don't really, you know, they, don't really change they don't really go forward or backwards they're just kind of there and you know it, it also I, I, Trip, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you guys both read this in the wikipedia page how this is kind of like a precursor to like um what was that movie uh black panther where they're trying yeah, to hide this of... like really important tech that could like corrupt the world and i find that i find that interesting that they're so afraid that this tech will get out that they're like you know they're hiding behind like a cloak and stuff like that 
Well, they and also the compared about it. How, oh, yeah. Sorry. No, I was Go just going to say the whole thing about how is it, are they hiding behind these laws and these, these um, archaic beliefs because they want to protect the world or they want to protect their world? They want to protect, they don't honestly think that the world will be able to handle it or if the rest of the world has it, then our little world, our little paradise here goes away. Is that what they're protecting or are they protecting the rest of us? I think that was a, that was one of the questions I got from it. I felt like it was going down that road a little bit. I kind of took it as a little bit of both. Like the fact that like, the, the first goal, cool. like the, the altruistic goal is ultimately to protect the world from it or protect, you know, the, if it gets out, then, you know, all hell breaks loose. Yeah. But, you know, deep down, like any person protecting their home, the the goal is to protect themselves as well. I would think. Well, well, all these laws were passed down from whatever this being was that brought them this technology, uh, be it alien or future, or whatever. They they they're kind of vague on that purposely, I think. Um, and I, I feel like that being probably was like, yeah, the world ain't ready for this shit, and they'll just tear itself apart doing this, like they did with the atom bomb, but um, or with like a relatively relativity and all that. But uh, I'm wondering, like, the laws, I think, were put in place for a good reason, but I think maybe they're more interested in... And I think that they use the facade even within themselves. They're saying, oh, no, it's for the betterment of mankind. That's why we're not doing this. You guys aren't ready. But I think there's an ulterior motive, even if it is subconscious, to, like, keep their little slice of heaven over here where it needs to be. So, like, even if the world did suddenly... Which I don't think the world would ever be prepared for that stuff like that overnight, but... Even if the world did become like some Star Trek utopian civilization, I feel like they'd still probably be coming up with reasons as to why, oh, well, no, they're not quite ready yet. Oh, yeah. Well, and it's easy to become complacent with that, too, generally, I would say. Yeah. Reminds me of Contact when she goes, uh, there's like, you're not ready for this interstellar travel, people talking to each other. and Right. Well, the, the longer they stay away from humanity, the more they're going to lose touch with like, you know, it, it becomes more straw man. It becomes them versus us. Yeah. And um, I, I like how it, it is a play on like communism, the economy. Um, oh, yeah. It's like a utopian, but there's a kind of sinister, what's that word called? Like undertow. Undertone. Undertone. For the better undertone good. About, yeah, for the greater the good. Greater good. <laughs> the greater good. Exactly. Shut and up. Yeah. Shut it. Shut up. <laughs> Who is your daddy and what does he do? You know, the, the power question the the question of power was kind of like um the way they questioned batman in dark knight returns like oh you have all these gadgets you have all this power but you don't share it with the police or whatever it would make the job so much easier if we had the these same things but you guys aren't i mean his point is you're you guys aren't going to practice the restraint that i do because my moral code is above yours oh yeah but who makes the decision as to whose moral code is right and who makes the decision as to whether yours is better than mine? Oh, absolutely. You are. You hold all the cards. You, you are the judge, jury, and executioner. Like I don't want to be from. judge, judy, and executioner. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> I am the law. It's, is this a Who center named? for ants? <laughs> no. Um, it, it's kind of funny because like they 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 give them this nice house. They're like, you're going to live here for the rest of your life. And then they, they automatically make it like a jail. But she gives them like printer ink or the typewriter it's it's a really it's i don't know she's trying to make him feel at home because like apparently since he's a writer or since he's a reporter every reporter has the need to write their next great novel like they're trying like to it. they're trying to put him into the like because they see what they have as utopia i, I think it's mentioned at one point or another they're, they're like okay we're gonna give him everything he wants he wants um to write a novel like they're kind of taking this guy breaking him down to like the, well, this is what he desires, but not looking at the rest of what he is as a person and trying yeah, to fit like, him into that box. They're trying to give him every opportunity to make also the quote true. unquote right choice. Yeah. I like how the mayor's like, you, you gotta be a writer. He's like, how do you know I'm a writer? All, uh, was it? What is he? All reporters are writers. Like he, he now knows they, if they remade this, he'd be a YouTuber. <laughs> Yeah, probably. And they'd be like, "You want to make movies, don't you?" <laughs> He's like, like, "Yeah, I want to call it. because you're an online film critic. All online film critics want to be filmmakers." 
<laughs> he yeah, he's like, right. yeah, he's like, we're gonna go make uh, talk to me and talk to me part two and yeah, talk to you, talk to you. Are you talking to me? Are you talking nope. to me? Nope. Um, uh, but he uh he eventually finds the like like you say he's trapped in this house, and at some point they just turn down the uh, electrical rays and he escapes with the the pretty young thing that somehow she is now into him and young they. Thing. Well, she was yeah. kind of into him throughout, really. Get up off of that thing. Right, right. And she's like bouncing her booty everywhere. She, bah, 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 bah. she was kind of pretty. I ain't gonna lie. She was a pretty yeah. young thing. Exactly. This podcast is becoming creepy real fast. <laughs> it, was, it was creepy the, the day we started the podcast. So, yeah. Uh, but she she betrays him. Like, what do you guys think about that? Like, I think that's the biggest twist in the episode is not even the fact that they, uh, our town of full of creepy individuals who probably sleep with their own mother. I mean, he should have uh, known she was lying. House. Yeah, but he's a reporter. Mouth was I mean. open. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh my god, terrible. <laughs> um, but but yeah, she she betrays him and uh, kills the dog in the process. Or was that before? Because like some like the cut backwards guys saved the dog, and you know, dog only dies once. Yeah, does he die like three times? He dies like when they evaporate him twice. Well, that's that's not really killing him. That's like that thing did in Captain Power, how it like suck up the refugees, de digitize them or whatever. Captain, it was Captain Power or Captain Planet. Captain Power, not Captain Planet. Fuck Captain Planet, except for Don (laughs) Cheadle's Captain Planet. Captain fucking Power, and the soldiers of the future. Was the what shit. about Captain Caveman? Captain Caveman, the unrelated. They're both captains, <laughs> right? Captain Crunch. He's not even. He's not even captain. He's like an admiral. Captain Crunch. Yeah, like these fucking berries and shit. Captain Power was awesome. <laughs> captain poison, Planet, you are hero. Captain Power was post-apocalyptic. Awesome. How did we get here? <laughs> Any opportunity to talk Your about sheer that. will. I had the whole first season on my desktop. If you want to watch it, that'd be game. Not right Already at this moment, but you know, awesome eighties cheese. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> she, yeah, she betrays him, and uh, what happens next? She betrays him. Yeah, well, I wasn't, him, and then well, and here's the thing: it, it it's kind of back to that greater good thing. Yeah. They bring him back and they're like, hey, we we wanted to see if you're going to make the right choice. You failed. Mm-hmm. So now we have to execute you. We thought long and hard about this. And we are going to execute you, but in a different way. And then he just shows up at the beginning of the episode. He's like, like he I'm here for a cl- uh, call the cop. Blah, 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 lobotomy. Which, I mean, it's kind of like I got it, but I felt like, okay, you had like this whole hour where you told this story and you went in depth of some stuff. You, I felt like you used the hour good. You couldn't have taken just a couple of minutes to maybe <clears throat> go a little bit deeper into what just happened to him. I get it, basically, but I feel like they threw in... They're either trying to really be hardcore thinking man's episode and have like expecting people to understand that... They're executing the version of him that's been there by erasing there, his memories. I wouldn't memories. even I wouldn't even say that. Like, yeah, they erased his memories, but they took him away from what they considered to be utopia. Like they believed in that place so much. Yeah. Like expelling him from there would be like expelling Satan from heaven. Yeah. And it, and maybe that th- there's a thing. There's lots of different ways you could take it. And while I basically got it. I feel like I'm like, okay, so you went into all this other detail about these other things, but this particular thing, the 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 uh the switch, the the twist, you didn't really go into much detail about that, like any at all. It just happened. And then you're like, okay, I kind of get it, but I feel like there's some details left there on the floor I'd like to know a little bit more about. I don't need like a super deep explanation but maybe just like something a couple of lines somebody say something i'm not saying hand holding either but it does it it's like they didn't really leave many stones unturned in this episode as far as questions for the most part uh, comparatively speaking for sure but then this one they just left 
kind of left wide open as to what exactly just happened. You mean as far as well, like the fact that like their version of execution is that kind of your question? Well, that I, because they go, he he makes the point to be like, we are going to execute you, but we're going to do it differently. And exactly what did they do? Did they reverse time? Because they showed them they could do that. Or did they just erase his memories and put him back there and play the whole thing out again? Or did, I assume you know, I assume that they turn back time because they never really talk about erasing memory. Yeah, I guess. I that was know. my thought, I guess. Um, well, I mean, like the basic idea, the, the basic what happens, you know, either way, whichever they did, it, it, it's the same. It's the same outcome, I guess. But I was just kind of like, I, I just felt it felt odd that you they they explained so much and talked about and asked questions about so many of the things here by they, I mean like the writers yeah. for us, but this thing, it's kind of big. They couldn't even give us like one or two lines, just like a basic standing off to the side. It's like, do you think he'll ever regain his memories? No, they're gone. Or, you know, turning back time that far could have implications if we don't need to do that. You know, something to just kind of be like, oh, okay, they, they reverse time or oh, okay. They revert. They, they, yeah. so you're saying when they or something. So let me let me get this correct. So you're saying when they uh they race his mind, they actually turn back time? I don't know. To... That's the thing is I don't know what they did exactly. I just know Cause, yeah, cause he, he has back. deja vu and stuff like that. So I mean it, yeah. it just all depends because she could she like walks around the side of the building and Yeah. You know. That's why I was like, yeah, I don't know if they reversed time or if they removed his memories. I mean, at the end of the day, they ultimately executed that version of him that had been in their utopia. Right. Kind of that timeline version. So, I mean, it works, but it just seemed a little odd that that was so vague and so ambiguous, but everything else, they did not do that way, which I was fine with. I mean, I don't always need hand-holding, but if you're going to hold, not hold my hand, but if you're going to like give me explanations to this whole thing, answer questions that normal people would have, and then right there at the end when you have this kind of high concept ending, not give anything at all, it's kind of like, well, that was odd. That's an odd choice. Seems tony tonally a little different, but whatever. Yeah. Now my question is, and I guess obviously we're sixty some odd years in the future. Um, so there's a lot of those endings that were like, oh my god. Then we kind of look at it and go, oh my god, that's so cliche. Now, did it when like going through that? Did you get the sense that it was kind of like it was all a dream, kind of a kind of a feel? Yeah. Like at first. Yeah. That could have been also. Excuse me. Of uh, maybe they erased his memories and it kind of came across as a dream. I don't know. See, that's what I'm saying. There's like, there's not really many questions throughout this thing. Like, big questions, they're answered. But this was just kind of like, you know, there it is. I mean, it worked. Like I said, I didn't hate it or anything, but I did yeah. at the end. I was kind of like, oh, wait, what? What exactly did they do? And maybe we're not supposed to know. And I'm okay with ambiguous endings, but they, they transferred to the, the Phantom. The Phantom Zone. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I didn't feel like ambiguity worked here as much as it does in some yeah. places. You know what I was kind of thinking? And I mean, I think we've got a relatively solid story here. But before they got to the part where, um, oh, what was her name? Elaine? The the girlfriend? Uh, when uh, Ellen. Eileen? Ellen? Ellen. When, um, before she, you know, kind of revealed that she was kind of playing devil's advocate um part of me was kind of like because she had such a thing for him like if she would have sw flipped the switch to like cause him to crash and make him have to stay like i thought that would have been kind of neat yeah i mean but i mean she didn't really know him very well um, but she came on she to him, him like she sees him and all of a sudden it's like she, you know she falls head over heels and i don't you know, know. It's, it's like bewitched you know that's you, true. The balls and it's the and slacks <laughs> ooh, that's a nice slacky bulge you get there. And saw saw the dog in the car. He's like, ooh, the perfect package. <laughs> he likes animals. We're perfect. Yeah. All this yeah. tech we got, we can't make any man man <laughs> enough for me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Stone's like, nope. We're not gonna have freezer. a man and a woman. We're gonna have a man and a dog. It's gonna be like every which way but loose. There you go. You and that I did, I... cannon you got there. <laughs> Looking forward to you. <laughs> I I will say that that whole bit, like the fact that she, and under understandably, it's the whole quote utopia thing. You know, however you want to play that, 
the fact that she didn't know like i don't know what these feelings are it's like okay you didn't you yeah yeah I, I I'm with you there. Which I mean, you find out it's an act, so that's why I guess. But I feel like she was like going for the whole love angle pretty quick. Yeah, she was a little overzealous there. And the the thing is, like with a lot of maybe not so much Twilight Zone, but a lot of stuff from this era did follow that. You know, someone sees a guy from across the room, and she's automatically smitten. Mm-hmm. That in Russian movies <laughs> can imagine. <laughs> Take and sci-fi movies of of that era as well, but and Highlander too. Oh gosh, <laughs> the Highlander the quickening. the quickening, or is that Highlander two? Yeah, Highlander two, the quickening. Highlander or three, the renegade cut. The search for Highlander. more money. Highlander, Highlander four, the click the commander, <laughs> or the sorcerer in Europe. Highlander five, <laughs> we're done. No, until Highlander no, six. Was. Is the source? <laughs> What's Highlander six? There's nine six. There's Highlander four. Four Highlander four so, forever. This something. I think I have it on my desktop. Highlander too fast, too quickeningest. Too Highlander. Too. <laughs> the the Highlander Tokyo or Highlander uh, was it San Francisco drift? <laughs> Highlander San Francisco. penis stretcher. <laughs> Or penis stretcher the, the lander. Quickening, lander. The, the penis the quickening. Penis stretcher. <laughs> Highlander, the penis quickening. The quick oh, penis. <laughs> Highlander. Oh, Highlander 4 in game. That's the one where Connor McLeod oh, dies. Oh, that's right. What's the one where Connor and his cousin are in the same movie? Is that end game? Yeah. Duncan. Duncan. I remember the VHS tape of that McLeod. one. Huh? I remember seeing the VHS of that and thinking it looked really interesting. It's not. I know, I know, but it had an interesting <laughs> cover. I mean, it, I the only thing that happens is it's slightly interesting is that Christopher Lambert like sacrifices himself so that Duncan can cut his head off and re- and gain his knowledge. That's right? about it. The rest of the the rest of it's just like a episode of the show. Huh? Did did uh did Connor when he like got beheaded did he like transport into a thunder god? It's god actually of that's funny when he gets his head cut off. It didn't fall right off. It's like this light comes out and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in slow mo because it's supposed to be all like heartfelt. Dramatic. You know it's about to happen. He's like, no, I don't want to do it. I'm like, then don't. You don't have to cut his head off. <laughs> He's like, no, I don't want to. But he like puts him in this move and he's like, you know what happens when we're locked in this move. One of us has to take the other's head. I'm like, not really. I mean, if you're not going to do it, he doesn't have to. You just come <laughs> out of that move and not. But OK. <laughs> uh, Valley of the Highlanders. There we yeah, go. Source. <laughs> it's the end of time. <laughs> Highlander of the Shadow. Um, so yeah, he uh basically the elders say they're gonna execute him, but not the way he thinks, and he uh ends up back in the gas station going, Sir, here's the quarter, here's a dime, here's a nickel. Now get the fuck out. <laughs> There's so your change, you filthy animal. Yeah, he looks over at Ellen, he's like, Ooh, ooh, she, I she would right on with me. <laughs> I would if I if I if I had time instead but I had to go to Albuquerque. He has to go to Albuquerque to find some meth dealers and uh, eat some chicken. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's, uh, <laughs> I'm sure I've, I'm tired, so I'm sure I've gone and missed some stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's the episode. What else did I miss? That's, I think you got pretty much everything. What do you guys think about the, the mayoral candidates or mayoral staff and their uh, explanation of everything? Would you uh, would you want to stay here if they if they force you to? Would you be like, yeah, I'm getting a free house, I'm getting you know all kinds of good stuff. I mean, didn't see enough you know. of the location, like enough of the town, to make that judgment. Because if that's all there is to the town, that'd be pretty boring pretty quickly. I mean, you don't you don't have to work. You just sit there and type. do what though? I mean, you I can create know. anything with those little dot matrix, yeah, things they had. Yeah, he makes a gun. He makes a ham sandwich. And? And I don't know. Maybe one make kid a gun cannot sandwich. live on a gun a and a gun. ham sandwich alone. 
You don't know. I mean, what if you don't? Living? What if you don't like your neighbors? You're kind of stuck next, living next to assholes. Oh, I mean, you become a cannibal and eat your neighbors. I don't think they'd allow that. You don't know what they don't allow. Come on, Trip. Have you seen their laws? I have not. Okay then. Have you? Their, their last newspaper was from 1953. Yeah. Does well, that I mean, sound like a place where you want to spend the rest of your time? <laughs> if it means I don't have to pay bills, sure. Why not? Oh, good lord. <laughs> Not that I don't agree with you on the bill part, but I mean, he can I just... go make his own woman and he can make his own Disney World and carry it in his pocket. Oh, because I'm sure that there's that much room for that kind of stuff. There is. Oh, man, I'd stay there. Absolutely. You could get whatever you want. I'd be banging a different chick every night. Not if I was married, but assuming I wasn't married and I was a journalist. <laughs> Dude, it'd be. You could, you could journalist, you're banging a woman every night. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Shit. the utopia for me i guess <laughs> what if i had cheese unlimited supplies of cheese the cheese yeah. i love but cheese is not enough alone to keep me in one place trev you're not thinking fourth dimensionally here you're right i'm not i'm thinking fifth dimensionally yeah so yeah there we go that's the episode anything else you guys want to talk about not specifically i liked it i liked it mikey he too. likes it I don't think it was perfect, but it was solid. No, you guys want to know where perfect. it fell with uh, Paste and IMDb? Sure, Trev, sure. Well, with Paste, Pasty, it hit yes. 130. 130? 130. Oh, better than that. And IMDb hit it at, I think, 54 or 52. One of the two. That's, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, 130 seems like not enough. They described it as being like pretty solid but then it got towards the end and um the last two minutes basically killed whatever moral it was trying to hit on it's like what moral are they trying to hit with this there's no great outstanding moral in this particular episode well no i mean the the okay i, I think I get what they're saying the whole conundrum of you guys are saying we can't handle it because we'll, oh, we'll kill that and destroy yeah, okay. Got and, it. and that's just what you're doing the same thing right you're just justifying you. it because of that and that whole more i get that but thing is i, I don't think so because like i don't think it uh discounts that because that's they figured out a way to be able to not take his life but still exile him right no i agree i love the fact that they they exiled him using a glorified salad bowl yeah <laughs> i forgot about that i was like what is this thing doing yeah salad it's bowl like with the feet on the side Right, just press a button. He's just right back at the gas station. I still think it it would have the ending would have been helped had they just like kind of panned over and seen maybe in a window or just like two of the guys from the the the, the whatever they were the the governor or not governor the uh, mayor and his people. They just said something along the lines of, "You think he'll get his memory? He'll ever remember it all? No, it uh, it works perfect." Or or, you know, something about time. Just give a passing comment that could give us some type of, oh, okay, that's what they did. I think we all understand the end result of what they did. We just don't fully understand what it was that they did. Did they turn back time? Did they erase his memory? Did they whatever? Well, I don't know. Only one, only one person can answer that question, and that's Tina Turner. If I could turn back time. Oh, oh no. It's I starting. Ah. Da, da, da. Big rolls keep on turning. 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 Proud Mary keep on burning. Burning. We'll be rolling. Rolling. Not burning. It's burning. Oh. Rolling on the river. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's on his cake, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, one of the Jacob. Most awful funny scenes in a movie. Like it's terrible and funny at the same time. Not terrible in a quality wise. Like, which God, one? What What's love got to do with it? Has some of his cake? Oh. Baby? He's like shoving <laughs> that cake in her fucking face. It's like God, this is <laughs> awful. It's funny. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> like I don't I don't know. I shouldn't laugh at that. But I'm not the only one. So yeah. well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I right. Think the Jacob. People made funny. Yes. Closing narration. Closing prologue. Closing prologue. The epilogue. Of the narration. 
<laughs> You've seen them. Little towns tucked away far from the main roads. You've seen them. But have you thought about them? Have you wondered what the people do in such places? Why they stay? Philip Redfield thinks about them now, and he wonders. But only very late at night, when he's between wakefulness and sleep in the twilight zone. Isn't that pretty much the opening? He just added, let me see, let's see the opening. You've seen them, little towns tucked away from the main roads. You've seen them. But have you thought about them? What do people in places like this do? Why do they stay? Philip Redfield never thought about that. It's the same fucking thing. He just changed the last sentence. He gave <laughs> up, <right>. Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, he's like, I've I've been writing this for an hour. I give up. Let's just have Jacob read the same thing we read at the beginning. That's what he was thinking about. <laughs> Jacob, he was staring at you. Big puss was staring at you. Big puss was I love it when the puss stares at me. Uh, <laughs> Philip Redfield drives a 1959 Chevrolet Impala convertible in this episode, by the way. Nice. What is it? Like... also had an Impala, but it wasn't in 1959. Was it an Impala Abdul, though? An Imp- <laughs> that Feel the rhythm <laughs> of the beat. <laughs> Uh, in May 1963, seven months after this program aired, Natalie Trundy suffered a ruptured disc in a car accident, which required years of back recovery and back, back, back brace. The event broke the moment, momentum of Trundy's promising return acting. The vehicle driven by the main character, Philip Redfield, is a 1959 Chevrolet Impala convertible. You're stealing my trivia. Oh, hey, hey Jacob, did you know that the vehicle driven by the main character is a 1959 Chevy Impala? Oh shit, I didn't really. Did you know that a 1959 <laughs> Impala was driven by the main character? Wow. wow. Did you know there's four yeah. regular Star Trek character actors in the Twilight yes. Zone? Yes. <laughs> Leonard Nimoy, Duncan McCloud of the, con- the, the, <laughs> Duncan the McCloud. Clan McCloud. <laughs> uh, Shatner. Captain, yeah, William Shatner. George Takei. Oh, George yeah, Takei. George Takei. Leonard Nimoy. I said Leonard Nimoy. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Is that quality of medicine? Spock. It's a, I find I find your I find your uh, taste is illogical. I find your lack of spam disconcertive. <laughs> there I you got go. Lots of spam. Spam, 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 spam. You're gonna you're gonna send us the uh the list. I did send spam? it to you already. Oh, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. did. You? Check your twitters. It's not there. The last thing I have from you it's is the link here. for this. Your your goddamn life. Oh, maybe I, maybe I thought I sent. Maybe I passed because I was like zoning out. So hold on a second. Wow, that's really bad. Wow. Wow. Uh okay. So that is uh what episode is that? Season four, episode three, which is uh Valley of the Shadow, directed by uh Perry Lafferty, written by Charles Beaumont. So what do we, uh so the episode opens up with uh man driving down car with dog. What do we think about the episode? I enjoyed it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that's the episode. So anyways, with that said, uh, we'll head to the last segment of the Twilight Zone podcast, which of course is the ranking list. Uh, we'll just get this out of the way and I'll just say 105. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you didn't like it that much? No, <laughs> it was fine. I, I didn't love it as much as you guys did, but... It's kind of a trend, I think. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. Crotchety old bastard. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, the fever will be number 100 now. Yay, Franklin. Right. And yes, I am a crotchety old bastard. You are correct. It's okay. We love you because of it. Sure, you do. So uh, but no, where, where would you where would you guys 32. put this? Uh, shut up. <laughs> I put in his image at 39. I don't know. In it, huge. It was what? Uh, in his image, we put Which that at 39. That? Wasn't that? No, that that was that was the week before last. Um, wasn't in his image the first one of this season? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And uh, thirty fathom grave is forty seven. Mm. Honestly, I I ah uh, man, I know we always run into this. Um, I don't know. Well, Trev, you know, you why know. do I have to know? Like we're no, like we're not put. I mean, would you put this above in in his image? <sighs> I don't know. Um, is, this the, is this the best episode of the season for you guys? I mean, it, I think it certainly in, in his image was. I can't remember either. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> it, 
I remember 30 Fathom Grey, but I can't remember what in his image was. <laughs> Nick, what was in his image? <laughs> it was about his image. It was about the the fight in the laboratory. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The robot. The robot. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think, I think this was better than that one. Yeah. I, I like that one. I just, I think they're close. Um, but I think that this one, I like the ending of that one, like the last minute of that one a bit better because ambiguity actually worked with that one. Yeah. Right. Which it wasn't very, it actually gave us a, actually, I think that one, you see, I have the reverse of that one. I think that uh, a bit more ambiguity with that one would have worked and a little less ambiguity with this one would have worked. So, because remember that one, they show the the body of the robot. Right, um, right. You don't know it, and then they pan to that, and that's where it ends. I think that they should have cut that and just shown him come in and left you wondering which one it is. I think that would have been neat. It would have worked for that episode. For this one, I think that they definitely should have given us just like something quick like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I overall, I think I like this one more. I thought it was interesting. I thought they did really good with the tension of not, oh yeah, you know, knowing exactly what was going on, and but giving you enough. So that you, you know, you could continue to watch and not just be looking for the twist, but actually as it goes on, you're like, oh, okay, it's this. Oh, okay, it's that. And give you a little tidbits here or there. Well, that was well paced. I would honestly say too, and I know it, it, it's not the fact that um, Ellen like did the whole kind of turncoat thing that kind of caught me off guard. And the ending, yeah. the way that they pull, pulled the um, the execution, definitely like. I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't figure they were going to outrightly kill him, but I didn't expect them to do what they did. And I thought that was quite intelligent. So, number one. I don't then. know what... <laughs> no, certainly not that high. I mean... Um, I don't so, know. I'm gathering that you like this better than his image? I would put it... I, it's I, from, Okay, so for me, it still isn't better than like a most unusual camera. I will always kind of hold that one pretty strongly. I would say right around that same area as in his image, but that's me. But did you like it more than Perchance to Dream? <laughs> it's not getting up to 32. I'm a sorry. Challenge? If you want to. Have I been challenged? Perhaps. I don't have it in me to challenge that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I you mean, can have to you... drive and meet me halfway between Alabama and Iowa. That's what Tennessee, she said. If you want a challenge. <laughs> He's like, Tennessee, number 32, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling plays. I mean, would you put this above show, Showdown with Rance McGrew? I would. Yeah, I would. Put it above Quality of Mercy? God. The problem is Kick the Can is right in there next to Quality of Mercy. Yeah, Kick the Can should be lower. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's better than Kick the Can. So we're I, not, I thought we like... said it was better than In His Image. That's 39. Yeah. But I don't know that I would put it above like a most unusual camera. That's my thoughts, though. What about The Hunt? The cunt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you put it in uh, uh, around the, the cunt? <laughs> put oh, it God. In. Yeah, put it in. Put it in. All oh right. my God, where are we putting this? Uh, we gotta, yeah, we gotta get. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right, 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 right. Uh, okay, so above in his image, or below in his image, or above the I'd hunt. I'd say I'd say above in his image, but still below the hunt. Yeah. I mean, we can't go seven or eight, yeah, seven more. No, just I mean, what's seven? No, you did it once. With not going to do it one again. At no, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> not literally, because that'd be rude. I feel like we this should, should want to like be fucking should. people. You know, I feel like this process would go a lot smoother. By the way, every week if we would just redo for chance to dream and put it where it actually <laughs> deserves to go. You want to redo this it just every wouldn't week? Wouldn't be a thing. It would just be <laughs> this process would be so much smoother. See, he says that every week. I would like, feel more satisfied you know every it? week. <laughs> Jacob would be satisfied. What matters? Oh, absolutely. Justice. I'm fighting for justice. People talk about oh yeah, social justice, justice warriors. My ass. I am a justice. I'm fighting for justice, truth, justice. You are sure are social. Way. I'll give you that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, okay, let's get out of here because I am tired and I know Trip's tired. Hello, I'm tired. Jacob. Jacob's claimed he had to leave by like midnight, but he's still here. So, oh, it's, oh, it's 11 4. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, uh, with that said, uh, we'll put it there. So, new number 39 is Valley of the Shadow. Number one, still Island Boulder. 
number 105 is still uh trouble with templeton next oh, wait, episode wait 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 number 85 oh, no no oh, wait, no, you're right. no 86 is a piano in the house Woo! <laughs> yeah uh, terrible human beings you <laughs> Um, okay, so next episode <laughs> is going to be an interesting one to talk about. <laughs> it, uh, but anyways, next 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 week's episode is going to be an interesting one to talk about because it's uh, season four, episode four called He's Alive, directed by Stuart Rosenberg, written by Ross Sterling, stars Kurt Conway, Paul Mazursky, Howard Kane, Jeff Atler, Five. Paul Breyer, and of course, the one and only Dennis Hopper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They showed the um thing at the end. Yeah. Showed Dennis Hopper and he looked like a Nazi or something or like a yeah, Nazi yeah. knockoff. It's just they had like yeah, some but like this black power for like lightning bolts, but I don't think it was meant to be black power. No, that's a great. It's a great episode. But uh, but it has Kurt Conway and Paul Mazursky in it too. So oh, Howard Kane. This does sound interesting. Huh. So we might have we might have a we might have a winner here. I don't know. It's been a while since. But when did the episode. bad ones start? I'm just wondering because Jess Bell, was... Jess Bell is when that's they start like halfway through the season. Still, I mean, uh, there's some there's some bad ones. Uh, I don't know. You... I mean, by Nick's by Nick's uh, estimation, the first two weren't very good. I, yeah, yeah. The time, the, the three. Yeah. Uh, I I dream of genie is supposed to be pretty bad. Yeah, that one never the gets bard. very good scores. <laughs> we should probably get finished up so we can get you to bed. Yeah, that's what she said. She wants to get me to bed. Jacob get you finished up so we. <laughs> is that what she said uh yeah, no that's what she, didn't say that's what she said what? No, 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 no. i didn't i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> right yeah. anyway we, we know what she's talking about jacob stamina, stamina. <laughs> get finished sake. up so we can go to bed individually i don't need <laughs> to be true. a triv sandwich i mean hey uh, anyways jacob <laughs> triv jesus <Christ>. anyway jacob <laughs> triv it's been awesome jacob you have content. You said you're writing stuff, doing things, and playing yeah. things. Uh, where's that at? On my YouTube channel. Uh, <clears throat> check me out on Retro Jake XY on YouTube, where I have content sometimes about retro video games. New video coming very soon. Working on it hard. Working, working hard, hard, hard. Um, should start actually filming said video, which is, you know, the, the hard part's just about done. And the quick part comes probably what is today it's it's monday the it, fifth yeah possibly by the end of the week i'll probably film my stuff next week but i'll start compiling stuff for the video and doing like voiceover this week so looking forward to that so it should be coming real soon i am let's see as of right this moment where'd it go why am i why do i have highlander pulled up because <laughs> you were kept talking about highlander <laughs> i guess so i was looking for that clip from the source <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sitting at, I need 12 more subscribers to monetize my little channel. And I need 12 people go to RetroJakeXY and hit the subscriber buttons. I'm hoping that I could, chances are I'll hit that in the next day or two. But so yeah, I want to, I want to put my new video out around my thousand. And as I mentioned before, a week or two ago, if this video is successful, I vow to release more regular content, uh, on that channel moving forward. If it is not, you get what you get when you get it. <laughs> that's what she tells. That's why he tells his kids every day. You get what you get until you <laughs> quit. When you get uh, it. Sub to my channel. You heard me. Yeah. Daddy, sub I'm to free. his channel. Sub to this channel. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Triff. Yes. You have content. Do I? I think. I don't okay. know. You, I, you claim you just work here. So I just assume. That's all I, working. yeah, I, I just work here work for here. free. No, yeah, most right? of the time. <laughs> all right where's your content at uh you can find me here on youtubes i'm not a utopian society put in place by a uh force field or anything like that so you can come and go as you please but you're still in the the 2d dimension so you got to kind of watch out for that anyway i do a random obscure straight up bad movies i put out a little short called attack of the killer refrigerator from the uh late 80s early 90s and up next is jesus christ vampire hunter where I get attacked by a giant thing of ice cream. Uh, definitely come by, check that out. Uh, that'll be up by the time this goes live. Good shit. Very good shit. Jesus! <laughs> I don't think I use enough of those transitions, but I don't want to, like, spoil the rest of the movie. Every time you say Jesus, I, I, I keep thinking, I started to believe the things he said to you. 
I really do believe this talk I got is true. I don't know what All that the is, good you've done. Yeah. We'll see why have we, we really night. sung a lot this episode? Why is that? We're very rare for people. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> listen, Jesus, to the warning I give. Please remember to listen to the fifth dimension. I s- something. Like uh, a I ruined it. Christian based band thing or something. <laughs> Yay. No, it's Twilight. It's Jesus Christ Superstar. Yes, it's oh. Christ. I haven't watched Superstar. Super Star. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's where uh, you know the 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 gif the uh that we are decided. Jesus. What oh, did we yeah, think right. about Jesus of Nazareth? <laughs> you're a wonder and you're a fool. We're Jacob and Trim. You know what? I'm pretty sure that Nick got kicked I'll in the Holy of Holies. <laughs> that's what he sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma motherfuckers we'll see you in the next episode of the Twilight Zone peace out <laughs> holy shit I am so tired we're gonna stop I'm singing in the rain no I'm singing no. in the rain oh. oh what a glorious feeling I'm happy again